This is a tale transcending time and technology, where the boundaries between man and machine blur. Join the captivating journey of Andrew Martin, a robot yearning for humanity, and witness a love that defies societal norms. As secrets unfold and emotions evolve, embark on a roller coaster through love, loss, and the pursuit of identity. Will Andrew's quest for recognition as a human be granted, or is it a journey destined for heartbreak? Let's dive into Bicentennial Man. The movie begins. In the year 2005, the Martin family, consisting of Richard, the patriarch, his wife, and their two daughters, Grace and Amanda, embarked on a unique journey when they acquired a sophisticated robot butler from the esteemed NDR. Robotics Company. Upon activation, the robot, introduced as Andrew, conscientiously presented the family with the three fundamental laws of robotics. Deciding to integrate Andrew into their household, Richard assigned him the basement as his dwelling and outlined his primary responsibilities as housekeeping and maintenance. Curious about the possibility of imbuing Andrew with a personality, the robot proposed activating his personality chip, but Richard, perhaps wary of the potential consequences, declined the offer. As the days unfolded, Andrew dutifully performed his assigned tasks. His presence in the Martin household met with mixed reactions. Grace exhibited resistance, even going as far as commanding the robot to jump out of a window, while Amanda, more compassionate, recognized a potential connection with the mechanical member of their family. Faced with the challenges of blending technology and humanity, Richard intervened, admonishing his daughters and emphasizing the importance of treating Andrew not merely as a possession, but as a being deserving of care and respect. During a family trip to the beach, a pivotal moment arose when Andrew accidentally broke Amanda's cherished glass horse figurine. In a surprising turn of events, the robot, devoid of genuine emotions, felt compelled to make amends. Utilizing his newfound knowledge, Andrew crafted a wooden horse, surprising Amanda and fostering an unexpected bond. Richard, intrigued by Andrew's evolving creativity, decided to showcase the robot's capabilities to the world. A visit to NDR, Robotics headquarters led to a confrontation with Dennis Mansky, the CEO, who viewed Andrew's uniqueness as an anomaly. Mansky, fearing potential repercussions, offered financial compensation or the replacement of Andrew. Defying Mansky's propositions, Richard stood firm, refusing to relinquish Andrew. The family dynamic shifted, and Richard, recognizing Andrew's potential beyond mere household chores, redefined the robot's role. Andrew was now tasked with exploring and expressing his creativity, particularly in the art of crafting intricate clocks. Under Richard's guidance, Andrew delved into various creative pursuits, honing his skills in clockmaking. Concurrently, the robot embarked on a journey of understanding humanity, learning about reproduction, humor, and even mastering the art of playing the piano with Amanda's assistance. As years passed, Amanda transitioned into adulthood while Andrew, unaffected by time, remained a steadfast companion. The Martins too aged gracefully. Grace entered her rebellious phase, adding another layer of complexity to the family dynamics. The decision to sell the meticulously crafted clocks brought about a discussion on the distribution of the proceeds. Amanda argued passionately that Andrew should receive the money, recognizing his tireless efforts. Richard, however, reminded her of the fundamental truth, that Andrew, despite his advancements, remained a machine. The Martin family, bound by the unique ties forged over the years, stood at the intersection of humanity and technology, navigating the complexities of emotion individuality, and the evolving nature of their unconventional family member, Andrew. Richard facilitates the sale of Andrew's clock, and with the assistance of their family lawyer, aids Andrew in opening a bank account. During one visit to Andrew's workshop, Amanda accidentally witnesses him cutting off his finger. Despite Andrew reassuring her that it's a fixable issue, Amanda shares a significant piece of news. Her boyfriend, Frank, has proposed. She confides in Andrew about her conflicting emotions, torn between marrying Frank and acknowledging her feelings for Andrew. Unaware of the discussion's context, Andrew inadvertently helps Amanda make her decision to marry Frank, considering it the natural course of action. Grateful for Andrew's listening ear, Amanda invites him to be an usher at her wedding, a request he joyfully accepts. Later, Richard takes Andrew to NDR, robotics for repairs accompanied by their lawyer. In a bold move, 
Richard warns Mansky, the representative, that any attempt to replace Andrew's brain will trigger an alarm, prompting police intervention and subsequent bankruptcy lawsuits. Andrew, expressing a desire for a facial upgrade to enhance emotional expression, discovers he has sufficient funds in his bank account to cover the expensive procedure. Mansky reluctantly agrees to the upgrade. As the wedding unfolds, Amanda becomes Mrs. Frank Charney. Andrew attends the ceremony, adorned in a tuxedo for the first time, greeting Amanda with a smile on his newly upgraded face. Post-celebrations, Andrew joins Richard near the lake, sharing memories of Richard's daughters. While watching a recording of a father-daughter dance, Richard becomes sentimental, expressing his loneliness as both daughters have grown old and moved away. Andrew reassures him of his presence, and Richard expresses gratitude for the companionship. Twelve years later, Amanda gives birth to her only son, Lloyd, who, in contrast to his mother, harbors strong animosity towards robots. During a beach outing, Lloyd intentionally pours sand on Andrew and adamantly refuses to apologize. Amanda intervenes, reprimanding Lloyd and insisting that he makes amends. Seated by the beach, Andrew confides in Amanda about his desire for freedom, not to sever ties with the family or cease his service, but to have the autonomy to choose. Understanding his plea, Amanda assists Andrew in discussing the matter with her father. Later that evening, Andrew presents Richard with a check representing all his accumulated savings as a gesture for his freedom. Andrew elaborates on his aspirations, but Richard, upset, accuses Amanda of influencing Andrew's thoughts. Amanda reassures her father that Andrew is entitled to make independent decisions and that, with time, he can evolve and develop a sense of self. The following morning, Richard returns the check to Andrew, officially declaring him free. Andrew packs his belongings and is urged to leave the house. Despite Andrew's insistence on continuing to serve, Richard asserts that his services are no longer required. Embracing his newfound freedom, Andrew purchases a piece of land near the beach and constructs his own home. For the following 16 years, Andrew dedicates his life to carving and delving deeper into the intricacies of the world. One day, an older Amanda appears at his doorstep, informing him that her father has requested his presence. They visit Richard, who is now on his deathbed. Richard, in a moment of clarity, admits his mistake and acknowledges that Andrew was right in seeking his freedom. He expresses gratitude, holding Andrew's hand as he thanks him for years of dedicated service. After Richard's passing, Andrew engages in a conversation with Lloyd, Amanda's son and a lawyer. Seeking information about his kind, Andrew requests Lloyd's assistance in understanding more about his destiny. Lloyd agrees, with the condition that Andrew's absence will no longer influence his mother. Andrew succeeds in the legal pursuit, embarking on a journey to find robots akin to himself. Despite several years passing, he encounters none of his kind. Throughout, he maintains correspondence with Amanda, sharing the details of his adventures. As his quest concludes, Andrew returns to San Francisco following news of a recently rebuilt robot. In a marketplace, he encounters a female dancing robot named Galatea. His initial excitement fades when he discovers that Galatea's uniqueness is solely due to the activation of her personality chip, lacking individuality beyond her programming. Meeting Galatea's owner, Rupert Burns, Andrew learns that Rupert's father was an engineer at NDR. Robotics and pioneered the technology enabling robots to mimic human expression. After his father's layoff, Rupert's father established his own robotics enterprise, passing away with Rupert subsequently taking over. Discovering that Rupert is developing a suit capable of mimicking the external appearance of a human being, Andrew recognizes an opportunity. No one is willing to fund Rupert's project prompting Andrew to propose financing it in exchange for a customized suit. With Rupert's expertise, Andrew acquires a new body resembling that of a 40-year-old human. Returning to the Martins' home, he encounters a young woman bearing a striking resemblance to a young Amanda. To his surprise, the real Amanda, now older than Andrew, recognizes him almost instantly. Further revelations unfold as Andrew learns that the young woman is Portia, Lloyd's daughter, and Richard's great-granddaughter. Reconnecting with Amanda, the two friends catch up, and Andrew resumes living in his beach house where he adopts a stray dog named Woofy. Subsequently, Andrew visits Portia accompanied by Woofy. Despite an initial rocky start, 
an unlikely friendship blossoms between the two. Portia discerns that Andrew's deepest desire is simply to have companionship and establish human connections. After a few weeks, Andrew finds himself at a hospital where Amanda has suffered a stroke. Entering her room, he sees Amanda holding the wooden toy horse, and she expresses her gratitude for his presence before drifting off to sleep. As Andrew bids farewell to his oldest friend, Portia monitors her grandmother's pulse, confirming Amanda's passing. Though Andrew can't shed tears, he senses his heart breaking at the loss. Seeking a more human experience, Andrew approaches Rupert and requests assistance in developing synthetic organs. Despite initial hesitation, Rupert agrees to take on the challenge. During the process, Andrew also learns to adopt more human language and expressions. Before the completion of the project, Rupert cautions Andrew about the radical change, emphasizing that along with happiness, he will also feel sadness, hurt, and pain. Undeterred, Andrew expresses his unwavering commitment to proceed with the transition. As the project progresses, Andrew visits Portia, and they take a walk together. Portia invites him to a party at a recently restored building, and he gladly accepts. At the party, Portia invites Andrew to dance, and under the lights, the two share a passionate dance, oblivious to the growing feelings developing between them. During one of their walks, Portia, grappling with conflicted emotions toward Andrew, confesses that while she considers him a good friend, she cannot invest romantic feelings in a machine. Andrew, feeling offended, reminds her that circumstances can change. Disturbed by the encounter, he returns to Rupert to undergo the final stages of the transition. Upon completion, Andrew visits Portia and asks her to poke his eye, reveling in the newfound ability to feel pain. Seizing the moment, he requests a kiss, and the two share a quick one. Portia, conflicted by the kiss, brings up her impending marriage to Charles in a few weeks. Despite loving Andrew, she urges him to realize his feelings independently, advising him to embrace the freedom to make mistakes and learn from them. Following Portia's counsel, Andrew takes the opportunity to leave. Meanwhile, Galatea becomes hostile towards Rupert, expressing frustration with his domineering behavior. Andrew, having removed her personality chip, becomes the focus of Rupert's plea to return it. Initially reluctant, Andrew eventually relents and returns the chip. The two find themselves covertly attending Portia's engagement party. Engaging in conversation, Andrew expresses disdain for Portia's fiancé, prompting Rupert to point out Andrew's jealousy, a realization that dawns on Andrew. Understanding his emotions, Andrew leaves the party with Rupert closely following. Unbeknownst to Andrew, Portia secretly hoped he would intervene and take her away, but he remains out of sight. Back at his beach house, Rupert shares with Andrew that he's working on a new upgrade that would grant Andrew all senses, including the intimate aspects of human experience, making him a complete man. The following day, Andrew visits Portia at work, now comprehending the significance of making the wrong choice. He professes his love for her, asserting that he knows she reciprocates. Encouraging Portia to follow her heart, he asks for one kiss to determine their compatibility. Succumbing to the moment they share a deep kiss, confirming their mutual love. The next morning finds them lying together in bed after an intimate evening. As they share breakfast, Portia laments the societal unacceptance of their relationship. Andrew resolves to take the next step, filing a case with the World Congress to be officially recognized as a human being. Despite a compelling case, the Congress rejects Andrew's plea due to his inability to age. The notion of an immortal human is deemed undesirable, preventing his recognition as a human being. Many years pass, and Portia ages into a lovely 75-year-old woman while Andrew remains relatively unchanged. Over a game of chess, Portia discusses her thoughts on mortality. Andrew reassures her that existing technology allows her to practically live forever, but she rejects the idea. To her, living forever is unnatural, and she believes human beings are meant to exist for a time before passing on. That's how she wants to live her life, following the natural course. Unable to bear the thought of living without Portia, Andrew reflects on Richard's wisdom about people growing over time. Recognizing that time is endless for him, Andrew decides to take action. That night, he approaches Rupert, who now is a wealthy entrepreneur, and requests a transition to complete humanity by injecting blood into his system. 
Rupert explains that this process will grant Andrew approximately 30 to 45 more years of life. Accepting this fate, Andrew undergoes the transition. After several decades, he files an appeal and stands before the World Congress again, now a frail old man nearing 200 years. Addressing Congress, he expresses a preference for one lifetime as a man over an eternity as a machine, seeking recognition for who he truly is. Congress deliberates, and as time passes, Andrew and Portia find themselves lying next to each other, both reliant on life support. Galatea, now more human, attends to them, activating the television for a live broadcast of the World Congress's decision. Holding hands, Andrew and Portia anxiously await the announcement. Congress declares its decision to recognize Andrew Martin as a human being and validate his marriage to Portia Charney. Unfortunately, Andrew passes away before hearing the news. Portia gazes at her departed husband as Galatea confirms his passing. She reassures Galatea that Andrew didn't need to hear the decision. His life was worthy of any human being. Portia requests to have her life support unplugged, holding on to the love of her life as she peacefully slips away, whispering that she will see him soon. That's a wrap for Bicentennial Man. How did Robin Williams's portrayal in Bicentennial Man explore the essence of humanity? Does the film's unique blend of sci-fi and drama stand the test of time? Explore the themes of identity and the human experience. Share your views in the comments. Your enthusiasm keeps the movie magic alive. If you enjoyed this recap, don't forget to hit subscribe and give us a thumbs up for more enchanting content. Thanks for watching.